Hey beauties, it's me, Lena B, and I've been asked a ton of questions about alopecia, what it is, what it means, and what it looks like. So let's jump right into it. Alopecia is excessive hair loss that can be caused by a fungal or bacterial infection of the scalp. It may also be caused by a nutritional deficiency such as crash diets that are low in protein. Medications such as those that are used for high blood pressure, heart disease, and birth control, as well as psychological changes like emotional trauma, high levels of stress, and even childbirth. Alopecia simply means baldness. The most common form of alopecia is androgenetic alopecia, which is a combination of hereditary hormones and age that causes progressive shrinking of certain scalp follicles. This shrinking causes a shortening of the hair's growing cycle and eventually there is no growth at all. Women with androgenetic alopecia usually first notice a gradual thinning of their hair, mostly on the top of their heads um, and their scalps become more visible. However, I do want you guys to understand that everyone loses hair every day. Somewhere between 40 to 100 strands of hair is the average daily loss, which isn't as bad as it sounds, considering that the average head of hair has about 100,000 individual strands of hair. The main form of alopecia that stands out today is traction or traumatic alopecia. Traction alopecia can be caused by wearing sew-ins, tape ends, braids, ponytails, tight rollers, or from excessive tension from brushing and combing your hair. It can also be caused by chemical damage such as overly relaxing your hair, chemical hair dyes, and perm solutions. This condition of traction and traumatic alopecia is usually reversed once the trauma has stopped. Unlike the androgenetic alopecia, which is something that is coming from within your system. If you are a stylist and you notice that your client has had sudden hair loss and there are patches of dry, scaly, flaking skin, you should always refer them to a dermatologist. Okay guys, I do wanna pause here and put my two cents in the meter and go on a short rant about the hair industry's latest struggle of dealing with hair loss from weaving, extensions, and braids. I wanna go on record and make it very clear that extensions are something that's been around for centuries and have never caused this level of damage. And that's because some stylists now are having to deal with the demands of clients wanting things quicker. For example, the quick weave, and clients are also wanting to save money and have styles that last longer. For example, sew-in weaves and braids that are being installed and kept well beyond the recommended time frame of eight weeks. I've seen stylists gluing weaves directly on hair. I've witnessed clients uh, pulling extensions into high ponytails and even braids that grip the scalp and create bumps around the perimeter of the head. I want you guys to know that these type of styles are sure to cause damage over a short period of time. If you are suffering from alopecia and this type of traumatic alopecia, I do recommend you get with your stylist and you guys come up with a style that would best suit you for allowing your hair to start to regrow or start wearing adjustable lace front wigs or just the normal wigs that can be removed and put on daily. You may also wanna try steam treatments as well as scalp massages using either a therapeutic oil or an oil such as the IOSO oil, which is 100% emu oil. Emu oil has been used for centuries for hair loss, eczema, and even muscle pain. I even use a few of the drops under my extension installations because it relieves itching as well as promotes hair growth. Some other hair loss treatments you may want to consider are products that stop hair loss, such as the Aveda Advanced in Body System, 
This is a three part system which will exfoliate, thicken, and reduce hair loss by 53%. Now I do absolutely love this product because it is 98% naturally derived with aromas containing certified organic lavender, rosemary, and pure flower. I'll include the link below to this product. Other options are cosmetic hair thickeners. Now these generally don't actually stop hair loss. However, the product coats the hair, giving the appearance of fuller hair with more volume. Or for a last result, you can always try surgical options such as hair transplants, hair plugs, and scalp redu reductions. These are all performed by a physician or dermatologist. Several visits are necessary to achieve the gradual results um, that will allow periods of recuperation. Whatever type of alopecia that you or family member may be dealing with, I want you to remember that we all are beautiful. We should not be defined by what our hair does or doesn't look like. And no matter what the cause or reason for the hair loss, it is a very sensitive matter. And it's one that frustrates women of every race. So before you shame someone with hair loss, be mindful that it isn't always caused by a self-infliction and it can be a part of an autoimmune disease or medication that's been prescribed by an actual physician. If you are a stylist, I do suggest having a private section for clients dealing with hair loss, somewhere that they don't feel the judgment of an open salon with other clients or stylists that may be giving them awkward stares. Remember, this could be someone's grandmother, aunt, sister or mother who just wants to feel pampered but has been too ashamed to show what she's been struggling with in private. As a stylist, our job is to serve and take on the servant role. Um, I do hope that my videos have been motivational and helpful to you guys. If you have any questions for me about hair in general or questions um, specifically about alopecia, I will try to answer to the best of my knowledge. Um, if you have not liked or subscribed to my channel, please be sure to do that. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more content. So you take your paddle brush and your blow dryer and you still work your way from the bottom to the scalp of the hair as you're working through. After I use my paddle brush, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna use a round brush. And when, when I use the round brush, um, it may look simple, but you wanna make sure that you practice. If you've never used a round brush, See that extra curl at the scalp? This round brush is going to take that crinkle out and it's going to stretch that hair out and get it straight before you even start the flat iron. And this part is very, very important. The straighter you can get it with the blow dryer, the easier your work is going to be for you. And so you just kind of gripping the hair with the round brush and you're stretching it out while you're putting the heat from the blow dryer on it. But again, you definitely 